Turn to the Gospel of John, if you would. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Is that mine? Thank you very much, Joe. Um, I want to pray for... Um, no, I got a praise item. A man had been calling me. He's called me about three times now. And... Um, he called, I believe, yesterday, and he had been uh, in a sort of a bad, bad marriage and divorce situation. His wife uh, was extremely mean, and the wife had, a, had made a bunch of accusations against the husband in the divorce proceedings hotlined him, that whole thing. Well, he called me months ago and asked, you know, he said, I just really need to tell somebody, need somebody to talk to. So I let him talk and, and I prayed with him and I said, you know, here's the thing. God always knows who's telling the truth and who isn't. And I said, I promise you, you, you put your life and everything you've done in God's hands, and say, God, I trust you. And God will bless that. So they had a court proceeding, and it, I don't know what all happened, but they found out that that woman had been lying through her teeth about everything, and they gave full custody over to that husband. Because she accused him of messing with them. And uh, just wicked, evil stuff. And uh, it all came out and the judge was just... Judges don't like people who use child abuse hotlines to gain advantage in a divorce or custody deal. They don't like that at all. When they find out they've been used, they really crack down on it hard. So anyway, that was just one of those things where I, I told the guy, I said, call me. You'll have to remind me who you are and what's going on. And, at, and he did. When he first started talking, I said, well, I don't, I don't remember. Then he started giving details, and I went, oh, I remember that one. And sure enough, because uh, I, I told him, I said, call me and share the blessing with what God does. And that's what he did. And I appreciate that. So it's good to have some blessings. Um, before we get into the study, I want you to remember to pray for Brother Sterling. Uh, he's kind of taken some steps back a little bit. They um, took him over to St. Anthony's, which just, they're all in the same campus. But they took him over there and did a CT scan of his lungs. I don't have any results from back from that yet. But um, he's one of our, he's one of the pillars of our church. And um, I, I tell you, the devil's just hit us hard with this COVID deal. And um, so pray that you don't get it, amen, because you won't want it. Um, but anyway, he's still, he's still hospitalized, don't know how long he's going to be there. He's, he's getting, um, he wants out, I know that. But he's got to get his oxygen levels to where he can breathe on his own just by one of them little bottles that they give you. And uh, so just keep him in your prayers, all right? We have some other needs, and we'll go through those in a little bit. Our country needs prayer, amen? Amen. amen. It's going to be a mess. I promise you this is going to be one of the worst messes that our country has ever faced. It's going to be a crisis, and um, God's going to have to give us grace. Remember that the devil cannot dethrone God. He cannot dethrone God. So just if, if we lose, I've said it before, if we lose this country, we have a better one awaiting us, a better country. Abraham's there waiting for us, saying, hey, what took you so long? Amen. All right, John chapter 1, uh, let's see here. Verse 1, and I'll read a few verses and we'll get into our notes. It's good, good to have you with us tonight. And um, all you folks online, we appreciate you. In the beginning was the Word. 
And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. And uh, just, just for a second, just draw your attention. That verse, I believe, there's always companion verses in the Bible. Isaiah said, Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail, and none shall want her mate. And I think there is a companion verse to every verse in the Bible. You read one verse and you say, you know what? That kind of looks like something I read last week. And you put it together and it just makes sense. Uh, in 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. You probably know where I'm going, but verse 7. Verse 7 is the most disputed verse in the, in the entire Bible as far as the scholarly elite, the textual critics, the, ex, the so-called experts with all these letters behind their name and, and how many years they've been studying the Greek manuscripts and all that nonsense. Verse 7 is one of the most important verses in the Bible. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word. J that was John's signature. First of all, he said bear record. That, that's John. That's how John always wrote. He bear record. He talks about bearing witness. Uh, you know, I am he who bear, bore record of this. He always uses phrases like that. And then he doesn't say the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He says the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Amen. Amen. Now, that verse right there you won't find in an NIV New American Standard Bible, Holman Christian Standard Bible, you won't find it in any modern translation because they say that it doesn't belong there, that it was added years later. But that's a lie. Because there was a man that, um, oh, I can't think of his name now, I'm getting that COVID fog back. But there was a man who wrote uh, some, about some doctrine and he, about 300 A.D., he quoted John chapter 5, verse 7, v verbatim. He quoted it and said, I saw it in John's letter. That's what he was saying. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And I will tell you, you have no other verse in the Bible that explicitly tells you that God, the Father, and the Word, or the Son of God, and the Holy Ghost are in fact three, and yet they are one. No other verse says it like 1 John 5, 7. Amen. Amen. So, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We know it's talking about Jesus Christ, but it's also talking about your Bible. And think about it. God the Father, and God the Holy Ghost never disagree with God the Word. Never. Never, 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 never. Contradict. They never contradict the Word of God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And that's sort of what I talked about last Wednesday night. All things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. So, if scientists diving deep down into the Marianas Trench out in the Pacific Ocean, which is, man, I don't know how far down that is, but it's one of the deepest places in the ocean. And they go down there in their little diving tube and they see a brand new species of fish that they have never seen before. Jesus put it there. Jesus made it. He created it. He put it there. Just because they hadn't seen it, doesn't mean it, whatever. But he put it there. He put all the stars in heaven, put all the planets in their orbits. He put us here. He, he built everything, amen. Nothing was made without Jesus Christ, the Word of God. And then verse 4, in him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. Now, um, I think I did this last Wednesday night. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 1. While the days are evil, 
uh, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. It's always important to train children to know, to study, to read, and to believe God's word. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator, again, capital C, that's Christ, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Now, turn to 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. Let's have a sword drill contest. See who can get there first. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 19. Wherefore, let them that suffer, listen to this now, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to Him in well-doing as unto a faithful Creator. When you got saved, you told God, God, here's my soul. Here's my heart. This is the core of who I really am. God, will you keep this until the day that I'm going to get my new body? Will you keep this until the resurrection? And God is faithful. And he said, I'll do it. I'll hold on to it. And no man will be able to pluck it out of my hand. Romans chapter 1 verse 24. Wherefore, turn there very quickly. Charge. Oop, I'm almost there. Oop, oop, got it. Romans chapter 1, verse 24. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts. This is your Antifa crowd. This is your young college age or teen age young men and young women in this country. They go to the university to learn that we came from monkeys and to get introduced to alcohol and drugs and promiscuity because that's what's predominant on practically all college campuses. It's there for it's everywhere. So God says God gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts. He gave them up. That ought to scare you. That ought to put the seventh spirit of God in you, according to Isaiah 11 two, the fear of the Lord. Rose, did your daddy ever whip you? Well, let me ask this question. Rose, did your dad whip you on your wedding day? Oh, the day before. Okay. I thought I heard that somewhere in there. Gave her a whipping the day before a wedding. Said, you, you may be getting married tomorrow, but you ain't too big for me to give you a whipping, young lady. I, you know why he did that? He cared. He cared. But we have a generation of people that God's turning them over to a reprobate mind. And they're not going to change. They're not going to. So... To dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Verse 25. Who changed the truth of God. The Bible. Into a lie. And worshipped and served the creature. More than the creator. Who is blessed forever. Amen. You see. When children were taught that there was a creator. And children in this country were taught that there was a God who was the judge of men's affairs. That stuck in their mind. I'm going to be judged one of these days by God. Nowadays, they couldn't care less. You bring up God, they don't want to hear it. There's nothing in them that wants to hear about God. They reject him outright, and with a whole generation, God turns them over to reprobate mind. But he was their creator. Meaning they just... You cannot tell me. You cannot tell me. When you start looking at... Go to YouTube and watch nature videos for about a day. 
And watch how, you know what I was watching this morning? These African water buffaloes. And they get ticks real bad, like in their ears. However, there's a species of bird called oxpeckers. And they sit on top of those water buffaloes and stick their beak in the ear of those buffaloes and eat those ticks out of there. They feed on the ticks that are inside that. And that buffalo just sits there going. And that little ox pecker is just pulling ticks out of his ears right and left. Pulling them out from his self, self underbelly, you know. And sometimes trying to feed it to their young. I'm telling you, that didn't just happen by accident. God created that, amen. That took intelligent design. There's, I got to tell this one. There is a bird also in Africa. This blows my mind. Because my dad had the, back when I was a boy, dad saw that the utility company, the power company, was cutting branches near, tel you know, telephone lines and electrical lines and chipping them up. And Dad said, what are you going to do with all them chippings? And I don't know what they said, but Dad said, if you want to, you can dump all that right here in my yard and we'll put that in our compost pile. He said we, but what he meant was my son will put that in our compost pile. So I'll, next, this summertime and next day I'm out there with a shovel Wheelbarrow, you know, wheeling it and taking it over there, dumping it in our compost. Dad, Dad kept a good compost pile. And I noticed about three days later, I dug in there and smoke and steam came out. I went, whoa! What's going on here? Well, you get that, don't you? What little rain that came down. And as that stuff started rotting, it started heating up. Generating heat. This is why you don't put up wet hay in your barn. You burn your barn down. Okay? Old timers know that. I'm a boy. I didn't know that. There's a bird that does. There's a bird in Africa. Builds this big nest. And fills it full of little sticks and leaves. And waits. Waits for it to rain. When it rains, then that bird will crawl in that nest and lay an egg down in that nest and cover it up with sticks and leaves and wait for it to rain again. Because that bird knows that by putting all that stuff down inside that nest that it'll compost and it'll heat up and keep that egg warm. And that bird has a temperature sensor in its beak. It sticks its beak down inside there and detects the temperature. And if it's too hot, it starts pulling some of the compost material out. And if it's too cold, starts putting some more in, hoping it rains and, and keeps that warm. Now, you cannot, you cannot tell me. I watch this and I'm just going, that is amazing. And there are things in this world that when you watch them, it'll just blow your mind how God put it into the nature of different creatures on how to take care of themselves, how to, how to regenerate themselves, how to reproduce, how to take care of this, how to do that, and on and on and on. You cannot tell me evolution by mistakes created all that. Never believe it. Second Peter chapter 3, turn there. I'll never believe that. That... It takes more faith to believe in evolution than it does to just believe in God. Amen. Intelligent design, they call it. Second Peter chapter 3. For this, verse 5, For this they are willingly ignorant of, that by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. And he's talking about the flood of Noah. By the way, I was just blessed yesterday. And if I had, had felt better, I would have done a Pastor Mike online on this. But I just, I mean, I felt 
terrible yesterday. I mean, it just everything hurt. The devil's just hitting me, bringing depression on me. And um, I was going to do a study on the word comfort. You know the first place the word comfort's found in the Bible? It's when Lamech named his son Noah. Because the word Noah means rest. Rest. When my body aches and I'm fatigued on certain days, weather days or whatever, even sitting up doesn't help me. You know what helps me? Laying down. The moment I lay down, I start feeling better. My body now is at rest. And that's what Noah's name means. So think, do you think Jesus knew that? Of course, because that's what it said in the scripture, that Noah will bring comfort. So Jesus said, as it was in the days of who? Noah. And what does Noah mean? Comfort and rest. Ain't God good? Amen. But anyway, verse 6, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store. Meaning, God's not going to let any meteorite crash into this planet until he's good and ready. And you compare the earth with the moon. Moon's got meteor strikes all over it. In fact, we can see them. They, they photographed one the other, the other day, a couple weeks ago. They actually had video. They were showing them, looking at the moon through a telescope. And all of a sudden, this big, big white flash came out. And they knew that it was a meteor strike on the moon surface. Moon is just hit constantly with meteors. Earth, nah. God protects it. Amen. The word of God keeps it in store. Reserved unto fire against the day of judgment, perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. And I believe that God uses that in a literal fashion in his word. I'm not going to deal with that right now. Colossians chapter one, turn there. Verse 16, charge. Colossians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. First and second Thessalonians. Got it. Actually, I was in chapter two. Colossians chapter one, verse 16. For by him were all things created. Amen. Do you think there's another universe out there somewhere that some other God made? Nope. Not, it doesn't exist. Do you think? Let me just throw this at you. Because I believe this. I believe UFOs are devil's chariots. That's what I believe. Who created them? God did. Who created the devil? God did. Did God not know that he would rebel? Yes, he did. He knew all things. He knew exactly how and when and why he was going to rebel and God knew what he was going to do about it. Nothing is kept hidden from God. Nothing is. God made it. So for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth. Visible and what? Invisible. Can you see a COVID virus flying through the air? If you could, you would run. Right? Or spray it or something. But... You can't see it, but God created it. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, those one, two, three, four, he's talking about spirits here. Thrones, dominions, principalities, and powers. Are there devils that have thrones of authority over certain people? Yes. And they... Cheat in elections. And they do a lot of other bad things too. Are there dominions that rule over people? Evil people. Are there principalities? 
the prince of the people of Persia withstood the angel of the Lord delivering the message to Daniel. What, what was it, 27 days, something like that? It was a long time before the, the message could be brought back to Daniel because the prince of the people of Persia withstood that guy. Okay? So these things are powerful, but they're not as powerful as my God is. Or powers. All things were created by him and for him. For him. This is my father's world. Amen. He owns it and he has created it. The Bible says for his pleasure. It pleases God. Certain aspects of this world, like when sinners come to salvation and God's people do the right thing. By the way, I posted the pictures earlier. We're set to do another feeding this week. Amen. I figured the devil's good and mad at us. I just might as well keep doing it. And, and, we have already received curses from some of Dr. O'War's fan club in Turkana telling us God is going to eliminate all of you and kill all of you and burn you up with in everlasting fire for speaking against his mighty prophet. No. God spoke against that man. Wasn't Mike Hoggard. You blame me all you want to. But your, your, your issue is not with me. It is with this Bible. You, don't believe, you believe that man over this book. And that's your problem. And he is before all things. And by him all things consist now, you ever held magnets together? Yep. When you get, huh? Rare earth Do you really? Very oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And you get the south pole of one magnet, north pole of the other magnet, and they go whap, yeah. and you can't hardly pull them apart, right? Mm -hmm. them apart. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And but you turn that around and get the north pole and the north pole together. What does it do? It pushes it. And we don't know. Listen, we don't know what that what that force is. Scientists doesn't even know what that force is. They haven't figured it out yet. Now watch this. In every element, iron, potassium, nickel, gold, silver, oxygen, hydrogen, in every element, there are spinning around like planets, electrons, negatively charged electrons. But in the nucleus of the atom are positively charged protons and neutral particles called neutrons. They have no charge. They're just there. Now, we just said that two north or two positive parts of two different magnets repel one another. But why don't the... Um, protons in the core of the atom, why don't they push away from each other? How is it that all of those positively charged particles in the nucleus of every atom in the universe, how is it that all of those things are held together and don't push away from each other? Verse 17. He is before all things, and by him, Jesus Christ, all things are held together, consist. Now, what's going to happen when God is ready to bring in the new heavens and the new earth? What's going to happen? I think Jesus is going to go, I'm going to let it go. And it's going to create a fire that is going to burn and melt all of the elements of the entire universe. It's all going to be gone in a flash. And now we have the new heaven and the new earth. I can't even imagine what that's like. But I some days can't wait for it. Amen. Amen. Now back to John. Turn to John.
Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. John chapter 1, verse 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Now I'm going to show you something in a minute. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There are people in this world that you can give them the gospel, you can show them love, you can be kind to them, you can be a good neighbor to them, you can do unto them as you would have them do unto you. You can do everything godly in front of them and try to give them the gospel of Jesus Christ and they will never be saved, ever. Why? They are pure darkness. When the light shines in the darkness and the darkness doesn't comprehend it, some people never will. But do we know who they all are? No. I've been watching this. Somebody posted this show from Britain. Border Patrol got guys in airports. And their job is to catch people either trying to launder money by taking money out of the United Kingdom, Great Britain, and without paying taxes on it and go back to their home country and put it in their bank over there. And they have dogs trained to sniff money on people, large amounts of money. Or when people get off planes, especially from Great Britain, when they come in from some of these islands, these Caribbean islands or Africa in some places, I would say about three times out of every ten of those, they're carrying drugs that they swallowed in these big bound up plastic deals. One guy they caught, he had over 70 packages of cocaine that he had swallowed that he was trying to get into. And the Border Patrol people said, not one of these smugglers has ever looked like the other smuggler. We have no idea just by looking at them who they are. Nobody comes in wearing a hat saying, I'm smuggling cocaine into this country. They just don't do it. So sometimes they just have to rely upon instincts and watching people and train to know how some people act nervous and they say, okay, can we take a look and so on. Dar I have no idea why I was saying that. I forgot. But anyway, the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. Now, John chapter 6, verse 66 that verse is there for a reason. You can't tell me that God didn't have that verse exactly in that spot. John 6, 6, 6. In John 6, 6, 6, very interesting chapter. Jesus is revealing a lot of things about himself. He's revealing that, um, let's see here. What all is he telling those people? He had done the miracle with the five loaves and two fishes. And um, verse 14, this is of truth that this is that prophet that ch ch should come into the world. That was prophesied by Moses. Dr. O'War claims that that's him. That he's the prophet that Moses prophesied of. That's a lie. Jesus is. He's trying to replace Jesus. And all of his teachings here, and he talks about the bread that came down from heaven. Your fathers ate the manna from heaven, and yet they died. But I'm the living bread. He that eateth of me shall never die. And so he's teaching them his doctrine. And he says to them in, in one place, he says, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So then in verse, let's pick it up in verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning. Look at this. Jesus knew from when? The beginning, in the beginning was the word. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Jesus knew from the beginning who would be and who would not be saved. He knew it. For, uh, who, for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. Verse 65, and he said, Therefore said unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. He is claiming divine paternity. That God is his father. Verse 66. From that time, many of his disciples went which direction? Back. 
Do you know what's back? Mount Sinai. Ten Commandments. The law. They went back to that instead of coming. Paul said, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. They're not going toward the mark. They're going back to be under the law and they're condemned. In that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Verse 67, then said Jesus unto the 12, will you also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. I love that. Peter had a lot of misgivings. Peter was a human like the rest of us. But Peter got that right. Jesus said, will you leave too? Peter's like, where can we go? I mean, do we trust everything we read on the internet? No. And I believe, hey, I'm talking to you people online. I believe some of you people are guilty of trusting and spending more time digging on the internet than you do the Word of God. God did not tell you, study the internet, for in them you think you shall have eternal life. He did not tell you that. The internet will probably do nothing but bring you a lot of confusion. Because there's wolves out there ready to snatch you up with false doctrine. Peter recognized that thou hast the words of eternal life. Now, back to John chapter 1 verse 1. Or first, excuse me, 1 John. 1 John. That kind of confused me a little bit. Hebrews, James... First Peter, second Peter, three Johns, Jude and Revelation. First John 1, 1. That which was from the beginning. What's he say? He's referencing John chapter 1, isn't he? In the beginning was the word. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard. He's talking about the Bible. Which we have seen with our eyes. He's talking about the Bible. Which we have looked upon. Talking about the Bible. And our hands have handled. You have to understand the absolute miracle of God allowing you the ability to hold his word in your hand and read it. Because for what, 1,500 years or more, the Catholic Church said, if we catch anybody with a Bible, we're going to burn them at stake. You have no right, they would say, you have no right to read the Bible. That's a holy book. Only us holy, pious priests can read that Bible. And it was in Latin, so they didn't understand it anyway. Those holy, pious priests. Are you kidding me? Those men were drunkards and adulterers and child molesters and everything else. Amen. But anyway, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which and our hands have handled of the word of life. So, and fi by the way, capital W. John is talking about the same word that he mentions in John chapter 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Now we have handled the word, capital W, with our hands. Amen. Philippians 2.15, that you may be blameless and harmless. Look at this. The sons of God. Remember Sunday I preached on the brotherhood. The brotherhood. If you're born of God, that makes us, why we call each other, Brother John, Sister Melissa, Brother Joe, Brother Mike. It's why we do that. Why? Because we're brethren. Why are we brethren? We have one father. Amen? So he calls us the sons of God. We are without rebuke. In the midst of a crooked, think of a serpent. Serpents cannot go a straight line. They have to, they're crooked in their ways. In the midst of a crooked and perverse. I didn't, I didn't know this until I read it somewhere today. The state of Oregon voted 
to decriminalize heroin, methamphetamine, cocaine, crack. If you're a dopehead living in Missouri, where are you going to be this time next year? Portland, Oregon, or anywhere in Oregon. And what they just did was they, they have, they're going to prove to the world now that liberalism is a great thing. We don't punish people who are addicted to drugs. We help them. Pe excuse me, people who are addicted to drugs, for the most part, they don't want to get off of it. If you've ever been high, you never want to not be high. There was a guy that I rode the bus with, lived in our neighborhood, and I kind of looked up to him, but he was, a, he was a troublemaker guy. Well, he showed up here at the church for a couple weeks, and he didn't know I was here, but when I introduced myself, he remembered me, and he was wearing an ankle monitor. He's now a policeman, by the way. But he told his testimony about being on meth, and he said, you take meth one time, you're hooked. That's wicked, evil stuff. And so Oregon, as a state, has decided that they're going to decriminalize it and not, nobody can be arrested now for possession or use of these drugs. So what's going to happen is every dope addict in America is going to move to Oregon and what are they going to do to that state? They're going to turn it into a toilet. You watch and see. Businesses will have to leave. Sure they will. It's a perverse nation. A perverse nation that is trying desperately to steal an election. We are to remain blameless and harmless. The sons of God. Verse 16, holding forth what? The word of life, the Bible. That I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Holding forth, holding it. The word of life. Acts chapter 17. This is all about the word, Christ. For in him, verse 28, we live and move and have our being. Our whole existence is because of Jesus Christ. He brought us into this world. And you might wish that you were born 50 years ago. So you could live in Mayberry. Mayberry didn't have any problems. But God didn't pick you to live in Mayberry 50, 70 years ago. You might wish you could have been born 100 years ago. And be Yukon Jack. Panning for gold. But God didn't make you born then. He born you right here, right now, at this very time. Meaning that God has a purpose for you right here, right now. We have our being. Also a certain of, also of, of your own poets have said, for we, all, for we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead, which is the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, we ought not think that the Godhead is like unto gold, silver, or stone, graven by art, and man's device. So that triketra on the front of that New King James Bible, that's wicked. They said, well, that's a symbol representing the, the Trinity. God says, no, it isn't. No, it isn't. Because I said in my word, there is no symbol graven by art and man's device that represents the Godhead that doesn't exist. That's what, made, that's what made me get into symbolisms. I had a New King James Bible. Somebody left it here and I picked it up off that shelf out there by my office. I looked at it and I went, whoa! What is that nasty symbol on there? I'd never seen it before. What is that doing on there? And then I started doing the research and I went, oh. Dun, dun, dun. Amen. In him was life, 
and the light was the light of men. That ain't the end of the show. I got more notes on there. And what happened to them? Stupid thing. I guess I'm done now. I was going to show you something neat, but I can't. don't have it on here. 